So I set out to draw an ancient symbol in an ancient way and I ended up getting about as high tech as I'll ever get. I've been wondering how to go about making a labyrinth with a compass for a while. I figured I had to get all the paths of the labyrinth evenly spaced and the best way to do that would be by drawing a bunch of circles going down a line. I could have used a ruler for this bit but I decided not to. I was wondering how they would do this back in the day like the ancient Greeks or something. They probably use their finger, eh? Use it as a measurement. Then I needed to figure out where all the paths would go using those circles. But I wasn't going to stop at the labyrinth. I wanted to turn this into a full-on piece. There's a lot of firsts in this drawing. Maybe my brain was tired from drawing, but I decided to go for it and use the numbers on the ruler for once to decide on the size of the frame. It turned out to be a bad idea. I measured it out on both sides and I thought it was too wide, so I ended up measuring it again, making it a bit thinner, and just going back and forth. Too wide, too thin, just kept changing it. I was inspired by gothic cathedrals for this part of the pattern. That's where you find most of these labyrinths as mosaics on the floor inside of the cathedral. And so at the bottom of the drawing I thought it'd be cool to put in some stairs like they're leading up to an altar. I was actually going to put some lettering at the top of the altar and turn this into a t-shirt design or something but as I was sketching it out I had another idea. Instead of letters I would put this mystical pillar like a monolith with an icosahedron floating above it. You can make of that whatever you will. And then, I don't know where this came from, but I felt called to put a pyramid behind the altar. And when you hear the calling, you listen. And these cages are inspired by some cages I saw hanging outside of a cathedral in Germany. Apparently, they were hung there in the 16th century to hold the corpses of three revolutionaries that opposed the church. Savage. I put them there because I thought this labyrinth was inside of that cathedral, but now I'm not so sure, so I don't know. They can stay, but who knows. At this point, I was wondering if it was a good idea to go over this with ink. What I usually like to do is ink straight over the pencil and leave the construction lines showing because I, I like the character that that gives the drawing. You know, you can see exactly how it was built. But this one felt different. I hadn't planned this out, so I had to decide whether I was going to go for it with ink or try something else. I've been thinking about going digital for a while. I still love building the design in pencil, but I just, I wanna draw more, you know? And, cause I just, I have all these ideas, but no time to get them down on paper. And maybe by drawing this on the iPad, it would save me some time, cause inking and pointillism it takes forever so i thought you know what today's the day you got to roll with the times ain't you the brushes i'm using for this are ones that i made myself i wanted to emulate the look of the pens that i normally use and draw in pretty much the same way as i would on paper
I had more problems with the frame as I was going along, even after I'd changed it 20 times previously, I was changing it again. But that's the beauty of digital drawing, you know, I can fix it. So I'll just clip these cages out, make them smaller, tighten up the frame, and we're back on track. By this point, I was already tired of the digital drawing experience. The canvas kept moving, I was accidentally changing the colour of the brush. And I tell you what, it's a curse to be allowed to redo every line. I was never satisfied, so I kept drawing the same lines over and over again. They should just give you three tries and that's it. Like, if you haven't figured it out by now, you never will. Just move on. You've had three tries, move on. For that reason, I decided as soon as the frame was done, I would only allow myself one redo per line. I don't know what it is about drawing on the iPad, but this drawing just didn't feel right. Like it was missing something, but I didn't know what it was. But I carried on in the hopes I'd find it. After a while though, impatience set in. I was thinking, when is this gonna end? I really wasn't enjoying the process anymore. and. That's the main reason that I draw, is I just like to draw. And I like, I want to enjoy the process. Like drawing with ink is mega relaxing. And I don't know, you, I feel like you can see it coming together more. Whereas on the iPad, just didn't, I just didn't feel it. I just wanted it to be over. I just wanted to finish it. You know what it was? It felt like it wasn't me drawing. I was using different techniques and drawing in a different style than I normally would. It's like when you're speaking a different language and you take on this different personality. Do you know what I mean? Very peculiar. I feel like by the end of it, oh, look at this, I've got a spider web on me. Some big ass spiders out here. By the end of it, it had turned into an unintentional Mobius inspired exercise in drawing on the iPad. Like I like the final drawing, but somehow it doesn't feel like it's mine. It was an interesting experiment, but I don't think I'll be doing it again. I am glad I figured out how to draw that labyrinth with the compass though.